Hello everybody and welcome, this is Lino Tadros. I'm very excited about this uh, series of videos about Cyfinity Insight. And in this one, we're gonna be discussing how to use the Cyfinity Insight API to work with Cyfinity Insight from the outside of um, the, the portal itself. So let's go ahead and get started. If you head over actually to the documentation available publicly for the uh, Progress Cyfinity Insight, you will notice for developers, uh, there are a series of APIs, there's a lot of them actually, that you can actually use to be able to get information about your data centers, the information about uh, each specific ID for each data centers, also accepting the terms and conditions if they have changed over time. Uh, and of course, all the different um, interactions and contacts and everything else that you might want to do using APIs. Maybe you're not using Sitefinity website, maybe you're using WordPress or Kentico or Sitecore or, or your own ASP.NET or PHP application that you would like to actually send this information and interact with Insight to send information. Using these APIs, you'll be able to do that with no problems. Let me go ahead and show you a little bit around. If you get to the main page of the API for Sitefinity Insight, it gives you some examples, for instance, like accepting the terms and conditions, which is something that you might want to do multiple times a year whenever progress changes the terms and conditions for Insight. If you do not accept it and you make an API key while they have changed something, you might actually get a failure because you did not accept that. So making a post, for instance, from a, something like Postman, Curl, or Fiddler, or SOAP UI, or any of the tools that allow you to make post calls you know, directly using REST API, just calling the specific API right there uh, with this URI will accept the, the terms and conditions right away. The most important part that you will need to be aware of working with the API is that the APIs usually require what you see in here that says authorization bearer token. And if you read here, uh, it's based on the access key available in your account itself. Don't get confused like I did earlier. Uh, I thought the access key that I get from the Cyfinity Insight, you can copy and paste it and actually put it in the header or the authorization for the bearer token, and that's not the case. The case is you will take that access key that you have here in your account and then make a different API call. Notice there is an authorization key that you will go against issue access token. This is where you will be passing that access key that you get from your account. And we will do that in a couple of minutes as well so you can see it. And then whatever you get back is the bearer token. And that's the one that will be valid for about uh, one hour, which is 3600 seconds. And you can make all your calls using the same exact uh, bearer token that you got back but don't get confused and make the call based on the uh, access key because it really looks exactly the same it even starts usually with the same letters and numbers and stuff like that so don't get confused like i did uh, and make sure this works well for you all right let's go ahead and open up my insight.sifinity.com and this is one of my accounts. I have several accounts with Insight. This one is for the training boss. I have two different data centers inside of here. One is called Tadros Production, which is a sample I started to play around with. And there is one here for the training boss that I started this month just for this series of videos as well. Uh, and I would like to actually start working with that specific account. So where do I get my access key from? Notice at the top where it says administration. I'm going to click on that. And in the middle here is access and security tab right there. And there is my access key. I'm going to click on access keys. I have one already for the training boss and I'm not going to share with you. <laughs> All right. This is a very secretive thing. You do not want to share with anybody. I'm going to create one just for this video so you can see it. It's no big deal that you can see my access key because I'm going to delete it after the video is created. So it's not a big deal. So I'm going to say generate access key. And maybe this one will call it, for instance, YouTube. We'll say YouTube. Uh, for this uh, series of videos. I can make it available for all my data centers. I have only two right now. But remember, um, other uh, companies might have 10, 15, 20 different data centers because they would like to separate what's coming from the mobile apps, from uh, different uh, websites, from Syfinity websites. They might have, maybe they have subsidiaries that they would like to collect completely in different data centers. You can definitely do that. Or I can actually go ahead and say, I just want this YouTube one to be based on my training boss sites or my Tedros production. In my case in here, I'm just going to keep it open for all both of them at the same time, which is great. If I click on generate in here, folks, notice the key will be available in here. And this will be the last time you will ever see this key. So be careful with that. So hopefully you can copy that, maybe put it in notepad or something. I have notepad open on a different monitor. I'm going to paste this just in case I need it. Because once I say I am done, you will never see that key again for security reasons. 
and now I have my YouTube available in here as well. Great. So where do I go from here? From this point on, I have to go back and I have to really copy this, uh, uh, the authorization one. See, this is the URI for the authorization. And I need to use a tool, something like I said, curl or uh, a fiddler or um, postman. I prefer to use postman because it has a lot of testing capabilities as well. So let's go ahead and open up postman and take a look. There's Postman, and if you don't have it, it's a free product. Of course, there are paid versions as well, but you'll be just fine with the free version. Get it from get.postman.com. And I created our own workspace in here called it Siphonity Inside. And inside of there, I created my first collection. With the videos coming up, I might actually end up creating multiple collections, but this collection is just an introduction. I called it introduction. And now I can actually start creating some requests. I'm gonna create my first request. Give it a good name so that you can remember what this is all about. So I'm going to call it, for instance, Get Token. Again, you can call it whatever you want. This has nothing to do with the call itself. This is just for you to remember what this call was all about. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste that line I got from the documentation, the one that's going against the api.inside.siphonity.com and is going all the way to get you the bearer token out of your access token. Okay. One thing I want to mention in here, folks, notice it's going against the United States based data center in Azure itself for Insight. In your case, you might not be in the United States, you might be in Singapore, you might be somewhere in Europe, you want to use the Netherlands um, as your data center. So there is multiple, there's six or seven of them and, and progress keep adding more and more. So if, if you are not in the United States and your data center is somewhere else, just uh, remove the first piece in here and just put the correct URI for your region itself. And again, in the documentation, the URI for all the regions with the Netherlands, NL, Singapore, SG, and all of these are available for you. Mine is in the United States, so I'm going to leave it as the default. And by the way, the default is the United States one as well. All right. So is it a post? Yes. If you remember, it's not a get. So in here in Postman, I'll be able to click on post. Again, if I click on send right now, it would get an error because I didn't give it an access key, right? Remember the access key that I just got? Let's go ahead and copy it again from my notepad. And where do I put that in here? Well, I'm going to go to body and I'm going to say I'd like to create this as raw JSON. Make sure it's JSON, not text. OK, and let's open up a JSON object and I'm going to give it a name. We'll call it access key like this. Remember, the, it's a capital A and a capital K. All right. And then we will open up a double quotes and then I'm going to be pasting the access key exactly the same way I got it from uh, from the Insight account itself. Alrighty, once I say send, I'm hoping this will work. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. We'll say send this guy. And it works. See, it's a 200 OK. Um, when would you get an error, like a 401 unauthorized or whatever? If somebody, maybe one of the admins on the account, went in and deactivated that access key, all right, or deleted the access key, you will not be able to authenticate. It has to be a valid key. It has to exist, and it cannot be deactivated or anything like that. You see why people get actually confused? If you take a look at the bearer token, it's called access token. This is the access key. So if you end up taking the access key that was given to you by Insight and make it the bearer token, uh, it will fail. That is not the correct key. That's not the one valid for one hour. See, it expires in 3,600 different seconds. Uh, and the reason why a lot of people, including me in the beginning, I got confused as well, is we, notice it starts with E, Y, J, H, and it starts with the same thing, and it looks the same, but if you take a look at the M, they are not the same thing. So this is the bearer token that you need. So we need to copy this guy all the way to the Q, and we'll say Control C. Let me put it in Notepad as well, just in case if I need it later on. But this is the one that you'll have to use to authorize all your calls going forward. Make sense? Excellent. Now let's go back to the documentation again and see some of the examples that I can use as far as URLs that I can hit. So we've done the authorization piece and now I have an hour from now to go ahead and try this out. If I take more than an hour, I have to authorize again. I have to get a brand new bearer token and keep going that way or what. So there is the terms and conditions. Very important one. You might not need it for a while, but if if progress makes changes to their uh, terms and conditions on the product and you continue to make calls and you have not accepted the latest one, you're going to fail. So you make sure you have something like in Workaro, for instance, for a workflow or if you're using a different tool, you have an if else inside of your workflow saying if the call actually fails, maybe in the else you can actually try doing the acceptance with a post using the terms and conditions and then try again. Uh, because sometimes every few months or maybe every couple of times a year, they might change the terms and conditions of the product. So let me go ahead and take this line as is for the United States Data Center. We'll say Control-C this guy. 
and I'm going to go back to Postman and let me go ahead and create a brand new request. We'll say add a request in Postman and this one we'll call it for instance uh, terms conditions. Okay, you can call it anything you want, but it's a good thing to remember. I might actually make this uh, entire collections available for folks. Uh, so that you don't have to enter all the stuff. You can just download the collections from Postman and get going really quickly. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to be pasting this line. Let me go back really quickly and make sure if this is um, a getter or a post. It's a post. You see that? It's a post and it will require also the authorization key has to be passed in here. All right. Let me go back to Postman really quickly and show you how to do that. So it is a post. I am accepting by calling this I am accepting of course not everybody can call into this and accept it you have to pass a valid bearer token there are two ways to do it uh, probably there is even more than that you can go to the authorization tab and you can say that this is going to be a bearer token and I can paste in here let me go ahead and delete all the stuff I can take whatever the previous call returned not the access key from Sitefinity inside but the one that came back from the first call okay and I'm going to be putting it right in here. We say Control V. Okay, that is more than enough. I can make the, the the call right now and send it, and no problem. If you don't want to put it on the authorization, you can always put it on the header. If I say header and I enter the word authorization, notice Postman helps you out. There is an authorization key. Now it's not enough for me to paste that key that you you got the, the bearer token itself. You have to put the word bearer space, and then you can paste the whole thing. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. It all depends how you're going to set up things and how you're going to set up your http client code from your mobile app or your um, .NET or php or whatever application it depending if you want to send it as a header or you would like to use it at authorization and let the system in postman do it for you in my case in here i'm just going to delete this i'm going to keep it on authorization so i just paste the key that came back just by itself sounds good let's go ahead and accept and we'll see if this works go for it could not send the request invalid protocol https Oh, look at that. I did a, a boo-boo. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and delete all of this uh, mumbo-jumbo. HTTPS. There you go. Uh, that is the correct one. It's a post and this correct header. Let's give it another shot. All right, great. It is a 200. Okay, as you can see here at the bottom. And this is what came back in with the username and the ID and the email address and everything else that available on that account as well. But it's successful and we just accepted the terms and conditions as well. Make sense? And the last example I wanted to show you, if you go back to the documentation and go down a little bit, you'll notice there is some really nifty um, uh, calls available. One of them, for instance, what happens if you would like to get an array coming back of all the data centers that you have access to in this account? There is the URL and it's a getter at this point. It's not a post. I'm going to actually take this and say control C. But remember, it's also required authentication. So I'm going to have to use the same exact bearer token that I got from the first call to be able to call it as well. Not only that, the authorization is the required one. You have to have that uh, part of the body to be able to, um, to, to, uh, to, to call this. But there are other things that are not required. They're all optional to be able to set, for instance, how many do you want to skip? How many do you want to take? Maybe some companies have more than 20 different data centers inside of their account. The default is 20, but if you would like to get like 30 of them, by default, it will return only the first 20. Maybe you can actually pass another um, header X data intelligence dash take and say 30 or 40 or whatever, but the default is 20. You can also filter on a specific ID for the data centers or an API key or an account ID. There's a lot more that you can do with that. Let me copy that into the clipboard. We'll go back to Postman one last time, and I'm going to create a brand new request as well. We'll say add a request. And we'll call this one get data centers. There you go. And in the data centers, I'm going to actually, it's a getter. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do this. That is the API. And it's a getter. It's not a post, if you remember that. And the only thing left is to do exactly the same thing. Go to authorization. Do actually the bearer token in here. And you'll notice, I mean, uh, I don't know if this is the correct one or not, so I'm going to delete it and get the correct one. I don't want to keep actually doing that if I'm going to have like 10, 15 different calls. I don't want to keep copy and pasting the, 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 the bearer token. So one of the things that you can do on the introduction collection itself when you click on it, you can create a variable and you can save that bearer token in the variable automatically after the first call. And then every other call you don't have to paste, you can tell it, go get it from the variable as well. So Postman can actually make this very easy for you as well. We'll say Control V.
So now if I call this with a getter, I have a one hour from the time I created the token to make that call. And I know we are, we are in, the, in, the, in the hour, of course. And you'll notice, let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, I have two data centers, if you remember. The one of them is called the Tadros Production, and the other one is the Training Boss site. And I have all the information that I want. So I can actually uh, deserialize all the JSON coming back, and I can actually display this however I want in a mobile app, in an application, whether on the web or Windows or Mac or Linux or whatever you want. And uh, you can give more information. Of course, I can take the ID and I can pass it even more in the my data center slash pass the IDs and now I can get information specific about maybe the training boss data center so you can keep going like this I just wanted to give you an idea how easy it is to uh, to start just get the token make sure you get the bearer token from the access key first and then all the calls against that in future videos we'll definitely go do a little bit more interesting stuff uh, with that, uh, especially for application has nothing to do with Sitefinity, how they can send interactions from like WordPress or Kentico or Sitecore or your own application on the web or mobile devices, how to send these predicates and objects and subjects and data and all the stuff straight into inside from the outside world as well. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel and the playlist here for Sitefinity Insight and Sitefinity as well. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos from the training boss. Thank you so much.